Hello you all! In this video, you are going to learn how to promote changes between environments using both Git for version control and the Salesforce CLI for deployments. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, and this is the sixth video of the DevOps Essential series. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit more about the DevOps Essential series. Here, we cover fundamental concepts that will help you implement and design DevOps best practices for building and deploying Salesforce applications. If you have missed any of the previous videos, make sure to catch up. Now, it is time to learn how to promote changes with Git. In previous videos, we have been working on the Dreamhouse project. We have made some changes that are ready to be pushed into the origin repository, so we can create a pull request. Let's check the log to see the commits with git log, and then push the changes to the origin in the branch we defined with git push. As you can see, git is giving us the link to open a pull request directly from the CLI. Remember, this is a GitHub feature. Let's click on that link and fill out the details of our pull request. First, we should specify a descriptive title for our pull request. And also, a detailed description is also encouraged. Certain projects have predefined templates for these descriptions, so you can reference other issues, explain more about the reasoning behind the pull request, and define how was working before the fix, for example. But we will keep it simple. By default, it will try to merge the pull request into the main branch. But for our use case, we want to open the pull request against the integration branch. Let's select it before we continue. Then let's request the review to the repo owner or any other collaborator, assign the pull request to ourselves or any other team member and fill out other details. Once we are ready, let's click on create pull request. Now we have to wait for this pull request to be reviewed, and if there is any conflict, it needs to be fixed before we merge it. Let's see how to promote changes with the Salesforce CLI. There are three approaches that you can follow to promote changes to your org using the Salesforce CLI. One is full deployments, the other is delta or incremental deployments, and last, package installations. A full deployment is a deploy using the source tracking features of Salesforce DX, as we cover on the fourth video. Once the pull request has been merged into the branch, let's check out that branch locally and make sure our commit is there using git log. Now it is time to deploy it. First, Let's set the target org to the integration org, and then preview the changes we will deploy with SF project deploy preview. If everything looks good, we can start our deployment with SF project deploy start. And voila, our changes are deployed into the integration org, and that's a full deployment. Delta or incremental deployments are possible by specifying which metadata files to be deployed using package manifest with the metadata API. To simplify this process, there is a popular plugin called SFDX Git Delta that was previously mentioned in the fifth video of this series. Let's install this plugin using the Salesforce CLI with SF plugins installed and the name of the plugin. Since this is not an officially supported plugin, we need to accept the installation without a digital signature. Once it is installed, we will need an output directory to store the manifest files. SFDX Git Delta identifies metadata changes since a reference commit making deployments faster, and also automate destructive deployments from deleted and renamed metadata, making this tool an optimal solution for projects with a large amount of metadata and it's specifically designed to be part of a CI-CD pipeline. To generate the manifest files, 
let's run SF SGD source delta and specify the commit range we did to and from flax. Now that the manifest files are created, you can use SF project deploy start and specify the metadata file and the post destructive changes file. And that's how you can do an incremental deployment using SFDX git delta. Another approach is to use unlock packages. An unlock package helps you add, edit, and remove metadata in your org in a trackable way. It can also let you maintain versions of packages that evolve at different paces, making deployments faster because you are not deploying all the files each time. There are two types of unlock packages, normal and org dependent. A normal unlock package contains all of the necessary metadata to work. You can create it once and install it anywhere. It can also depend on another package, and the dependency resolution mechanism occurs at the package creation phase. A org dependent package depends on metadata that already exists in an org and they are designed for a specific production and sandbox orgs. They cannot depend on other packages, and the dependency resolution mechanism occurs at the package installation phase. To create an unlock package, make sure to enable the feature under the DevHub setup interface. Also, you will need to work on a SFDX project, and it is highly recommended to use source version control as well. For this example, we will create an unlock org dependent package with the SF package create command, specifying a name and a description for our app. Also, we need to specify the type, which is unlocked, the source path, which is force app, and the DevHub org that has the unlock package feature enabled. Once the package is created, we will have a package ID. We can list all the available packages with SF package list. Then we will need to create a version for our package with the SF package version create command, specifying the package name, the path, an installation key, which will serve as a password, and the devhub org. This process might take some time, so let's specify the wait flag to get the result. Once the version is created, you can install it using a package installation URL or the Salesforce CLI. Let's check our SFDX project configuration file to see the new additions. Here we can see the package definition and the package aliases with their respective IDs. To install the package into our integration org, we will use SF package install, specifying the target org the package and version we want to install, the installation key, and last but not least, a flag to specify to compile only the Apex classes defined in our package. And voila, our package has been installed into our org. Now you have seen how to promote changes using Git and also deploy these changes using the Salesforce CLI. But how can we mix these two? Well, by applying continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is the practice of automating these deploys to different environments. Let's just add the deployment to one of the automation steps in your workflow using one of these approaches. I would recommend you to use full deployments, which is the best practice. You are going to deploy your whole application with its dependencies to each environment. And what about change sets? Well, since you are using source control, you don't need them. Let's stick with these techniques that you learned today and improve your DevOps skills. And that's it. Make sure to check all of the resources we are sharing with you in this video. And now it is time to start applying continuous delivery in your projects. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell to receive notifications every time we publish a new video. For example, the next DevOps Essentials video that it will be published soon. 
Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.